Okay. Hi. Hello. Um. <clears throat> excuse me. It's a. Uh, it's a boy immortal. I'm trying something new today. Uh, I doubt this is gonna look well, but if nothing else, I'll have the audio recording. So. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> um. Dead silence. He likes that. Um, today's episode, uh, well, first of all, hi. <laughs> hi, how are you? Uh, like Spongebob, in a way, oh my gosh, I just realized I have, like, no audio going, no music, no nothing. Um, my oh my, I should do something about that, but at the same time, I'm just like, I can't really be bothered, per se. Um, little funny thing. My mom uh, uses my Spotify, and so on occasion, I'll just see the most uh, random of things playing, and I'm like, are you still using my Spotify? And technically, she is. Oh, she isn't anymore, so I'm going to hijack my Spotify for a moment. Um, uh, You know, if she wants it back, she can take it. I don't really care. It's just, you know. It's it's nice to have a little something playing in the background when um you're doing this so it's not dead silence. I usually try to go with lo-fi just because it's easier to not really have to think about uh, what you're listening to or um, wanting to sing the lyrics and stuff like that. <sighs> um... There's a particular one I want to listen to, but I don't care enough to try and find it. Anyway, <clears throat> it's your boy, uh, Julian, <laughs> back at it again with. Oh, I just realized. Hold on. <laughs> I think it might have started playing my Spotify music. That's gonna be embarrassing, and I will have to cut that out. Okay, so on the top <laughs> in the video, at least. Well, technically. Trying new things, am I right? Anyway, um, so I wanted to talk about something a bit, uh, it's not super serious, but it is something I've been thinking about a lot recently, and I felt, you know, it couldn't wait to talk about it because I feel like a lot of people probably deal with it. Um, I, there's a streamer I watch, I won't say their name because they're going to be changing their name soon and they're graduating funny enough, that's why I'm mentioning them and um, you know I, I've, I've enjoyed their content I've enjoyed them I can't say that I've watched them a lot simply because um, I forget sometimes that you know, like, there's not so much that I forget but like there's so many streamers and so many content creators out there that it's it's hard to always keep up with everyone and and everything that they're doing, you know. And so anyway, I admittedly hadn't watched a lot of their streams, but I didn't watch them. I enjoyed them, but I got a notification in their Discord that they're like, "Oh, I'm graduating," and I'm just like, "Bro, I felt like you just." went live, like, not live, but, like, you just debuted, but then I was watching a bit of their stream, and they were kind of, like, talking about everything that was going on, and all the kind of stuff that had happened over, I guess, since they we debuted and stuff like that, and it's just like, oh my gosh, you were going through so much shit, and it's really unfortunate that you had to deal with any and all of that, so it's just like, I can understand why they would um why they would have to uh why, why they're choosing to to graduate and and no longer do what they're doing, but it made me think about um, it made me think about the fact of like being in this space and seeing a lot of different things when in the VTuber space community, 
whatever you want to call it. Some people say it's not a community. Some people say it is a community. Some say it's a whatever, whatever. I just call it a space because I feel like that's just the easiest way to encompass it all. But being in this space and being for all intents and purposes, it's an insider and an outsider at the same time. Um, kind of lends itself to being like, you kind of find yourself privy to a lot of things that you might not otherwise, but you also don't necessarily have to deal with because you're technically not really like ingrained into the space yet. Uh, and I say this in a sense of like, I put out YouTube videos. I have my, uh, you know, I have Immortal, who you see on the screen, um, one way or the other. And while I'm, I mod for different streamers and I've been on streamer streams, I've yet to like fully jump into that whole VTuber era of mine, PNG or otherwise, you know? And one of the things that I've noticed lately, and I don't think it's so much that like, I remember somebody saying, uh, uh, well, not supposed to be saying, I feel like my mom or someone, or we kind of made note of like, once you get something, you can't help but to see that everywhere simply because now you have one or you notice it. So like, let's say, you know, you get a car and you have this particular model of car. And now it seems like everywhere you go, you see that model of car. And I'm sure there's like some kind of way for this phenomenon or something, the way that you brain works, but you start seeing it everywhere. Like, oh my gosh, this person has, you know, Alexis. Oh my God, that person has Alexis. And you see like there's Lexus everywhere. But um, it's kind of like that in a way of like, you feel like, I feel like me personally, and this, again, I think it's because I'm following a lot of VTubers and this space is, while it is vast, it's also still kind of like small in a way. You know, it's a small world after all type of situation. And so I feel like I'm seeing people who are graduating or going on hiatus or doing all these different things with their content and whatnot. And it's like, it's a whole lot all at once. And not that it's directly affecting me in the sense of like feeling a type of way, but it kind of makes me like wonder about the fact of what I'm, I think what I'm trying to get is that it's difficult to, okay, let's just take three, take it from the top. It's interesting being in this space where you haven't really gotten off the ground yet because you just haven't for obvious reasons, like you, you're not streaming yet, you don't have plans to stream yet because, you know, you don't really have the capabilities or things of that nature, but you see these different things going on and in a way it's like somewhat discouraging because like if you see these people who like this person I mentioned they have like over um <clears throat> excuse me they have over like 7,000 followers and so forth and then they're just kind of like you know I'm I'm done with this or whatever or like I've and not that this is an exactly related situation, but I've seen people who have been partnered and have like following, and then they just hasn't streamed in like two years, and I'm like, what happened? What went where to where you decided that this was no longer for you? You know, um, so I think it's a bit disheartening in a way. When you're in this space, you want to be in this space, but you're like, am I cut out for this? Um, is this something that I can effectively do? Uh, you know, it's just, it, it makes you think when you see people who are like well established in, for one reason or another, are, are just like, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. Or I need a break or, and again, I think it's just because it's like if you are in a certain crowd and those crowds after overlap into other crowds, eventually you're just consistently going to see 
some of the same thing because multiple people in multiple circles. And so in a way, it's, um, in a way, it's just like you're consistently seeing it because you're just in a bunch of circles where these circles overlap and everybody, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I think you get what I'm saying. And so in a way, it kind of makes it feel to where it's like, is this something I can do? Is this something I should do? You know, like, is it? It's something I want to do, yes, but it's also just kind of like, it's kind of like, will the space be there when I get there? You know, it's like, it's, it's kind of one of those hard to, to fathom type of situations of, it's kind of hard to put in the words. It's like, I'm trying to think of a good analogy here because I don't think there's like much of an equivalent or I guess like it'd be like if you were I don't know <laughs> I'm usually good at analogies and I'm usually good at drawing correlations but I think I kind of find myself in a bit of a at a bit of a loss here simply because it's like I want to do I, I, I don't know what I want to do <laughs> I'm drawing such a blank and I hate that I'm drawing a blank because like I know what I want to talk about and I know what I'm trying to say but like putting into words is like eluding me at the moment I guess I'm just saying that like being as an outsider and seeing the things that people are going through and the things that people have dealt with, it kind of makes you wonder, is this worth it? Is the effort and the time that you're putting into these things worth it? You know? Um, and so that's kind of like where I find myself in the sense of like, yeah, you know, this is a great space and, and this is, um, you know, it's fun and it's inviting and it's exciting and all these different things. But at the same time, it's just kind of very much like, will this still be a thing when I finally decide to do it? Or will I still have this passion to want to do it after knowing everything that I know? So it's, again, I don't want to say it's disheartening, but it's just kind of like, It's just, I'm not sure what it is, honestly. It's like, I just want the people who want to be in this space to be able to be successful and, and do what it is that they want to do, whatever that means, y'all. I, um, it's so funny because I made this tweet yesterday talking about how, like, I get emotional from seeing people, you know, going for their dreams and, and whether they achieve them or not, the fact that they're, they're doing it. And even if you do achieve them, that's great also. But, like, the act of going for something you want just, like, warms my heart. Like, I was watching this streamer and they had a re-debut. Well, it was like a debut for their 2.0 model and they had like all these other lovely people saying you can do it you know mm -mm. not going to cry okay we're good we're back and so they had like all these like their different friends and people and they were giving them like all these kind of like positive affirmations and it was just like really sweet to see and it was just like, I often find myself in a space of being, <clears throat> I often find myself in a space of being inspired and wanting to do more and wanting to achieve this, that, and the third. But then at the same time, I'm also just kind of like, 
the drive and the passion will be there, but then it won't because it's like you get discouraged or circumstances just make you feel like this isn't something that is for you or that you can do right now. So it's kind of like, why even have these dreams? Like why even have these things that you want to do, you know, like self doubt and intrusive thoughts like to come in and just <laughs> wreck your shit for all intents and purposes. So it's like, it makes it hard to like, I'm trying to like think of a good example, but it's, and I'm not trying to quote Maya Angelou or make, I was going to make a reference to uh, this anime called Black Clover. And I can't remember the character's name for the life of me, but uh, she basically uses like thread magic or something like that. But this, the for all intents and purposes, like the the queen of the I was about to say the Sealy Queen, but it's a whole different thing. But the queen of the witches um, kept her locked in a cage until she could like finally do this thing or whatever. And she was just like, you know, oh, I can only, you know, I can't imagine being in the real world and this, that, and the third, and blah, blah, blah. Until one day somebody literally came and, and broke her free and she was able to blossom and, and do the things she wanted to do, you know? And in ways, I kind of feel like I'm in that boat in a way. Like, I just, I feel like there's a lot of circumstances that have caged me to be around. So sorry, I have a bit of a stuffy nose. Um, a lot of circumstances. Oh my gosh, really? Okay. For the third time, a lot of circumstances have kind of like uh, caged me to being where I am today. And caged me to be where I am today. I swear, sometimes words just be coming out of my mouth. It's like, is that really what you mean, girl? <sighs> Take 78. This a lot of things going on in the circumstances that I'm in at the moment, I feel like are a bit of a cage and in ways are hindering me from what I would want to do and the things I would want to achieve. And not that I'm waiting for, <laughs> shout out to Cheetah Girls, not that um, I'm waiting for a Prince Charming to come and rescue me or anything like that, but it's just life has certain things that my life rather has certain things that I have to move and change and sort out before I can be like, okay, yes, this is what the vibe is. This is what I'm doing. I know what I like. <sighs> There's this um, quote from a person named Ira Glass. Uh, it was like, a, it's, a, it's an inspirational video. I'll probably be putting it at the end of this if I remember um, or if somebody reminds me, I'll share it. But he basically talks about having taste and knowing like what you want, but not really having like the skill or the um, the way to execute it yet. So you can do work, but you know it's not at the level you want it to be at. You know, it's not what exactly you're shooting for. But when you get to the place to where you can execute those things, you'll already have that taste there so that your level, your skill level will just line up with your taste and you'll just make amazing things. Like I know that I have great ideas. I know that I have taste and I know that I have like a lot of different things that I think are great. And it's not me tooting my own horn. It's people who support me or in my life tell me this all the time. So clearly either I'm doing something right or everybody's lying to me. You know, one of the two. Um, but it's like I have these different things and these thoughts of what I want to do. But life has its limitations and, and things to where at the moment it's just not feasible. So it is what it is. But when I get to that place to where I can do those things, you know, who knows what will come of it. It could be great or maybe it just won't work out, you know. Um, I have people all the time like, oh, when you start streaming and they stand there, it's going to be amazing. You're going to pop off. And it's like, I appreciate that. 
But at the same time, I try to tamper my expectations. <laughs> um, I've, I've often made the point of like, oh, shit, I had a quote. and Because it was something I came up with. And I can't remember. But it was basically talking about like, I keep my expectations like low so that when inevitably, you know, they're not met, it's not that hard of a fall. You know, if you if your expectations are like from your bed to the floor, you fall onto the floor, it might hurt like a little bit, depending on your floors, depending on how hard you hit the floor. But it's like, oh, okay, that's not so bad. But if you fall from like the third story of your stairs <laughs> to the floor, then yeah, that's going to hurt a whole lot more, let alone, and, and depending on the expectations and depending on the level of like, of which you could fall, the, the, the sky, for all intents and purposes, is the limit of which the pain you can have. And so, in that kind of a way, I do my best to like, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe that's something I should think about too, maybe the fact that I, you know, tamper my expectations out of fear. Ooh, not me reading myself. Okay, let's not go down that avenue. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Nope, nope. <laughs> Being a little too real on a Saturday. Oh, and I just thought about it. Wait, what time is it? Oh, shit, 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 shit. I have D&D. &D. Okay, okay, we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> I have D&D &D today, and it's, I think it's like it. Is he dead? 2.30 or 3.30? They use milk. Okay, so just a quick little side note. Um, a quick little side note. It's it's like um, the the guys who I play D and D with. One of them is a military guy. Well, sorry, my D is a military guy. Um, another person is a military guy, and then I'm not sure if the other two were or are at some well well. That's neither here nor there, but they use military time. So military time is fine. It's confusing, but I can make deal. I can make deal. I can make do. You know? Um, but it's like, imagine... Sorry, one moment. Texting my bestie of mine. Hey, Fresa. Fresa. I love you, girl. But yeah, so um, shout out to my girlfriend. So she know who she is. I love her. Um, anyway, but they use military time, right? So military time is fine. And I know this is a completely different rant, but I'm going to go back to what I was talking about in a second. But they use military time. But then imagine using military time and you're two hours behind me. So girl, this is becoming that Zach Galifianakis math gif of, okay, it's 2.30 for me, and you said at 1,600 hours, so divided by two, multiplicative of not, girl, what, <laughs> you know, time zones as hard as it is, and then you want to throw military time, and I have another friend who uses military time, and she's like, it's so easy, da, da, da. can you put this in layman terms for the people who are stupid, I'm sorry, I am a dumb American, I use the 24-hour clock, and I use not the metric system. I think that's what it is. Is it the metric? Whatever. We, we don't do whatever, whatever all the Europeans do. Uh, not, well, we don't do what all the rest of the world uses. But anyway, circling back, and, and I know I've talked about this in, I maybe want to say the last episode or something of that nature, but I just... Shout out to Heimerdinger, you know. He has a, a voice line when he puts down the turret or whatever. And they, when Arcane was a big thing, they uh, they use different uh, characters' voice lines and things of that nature, but one that always I loved hearing and would like... <sighs> I'm very sensitive to things. Like, I can be a cold-hearted bitch when I want to be, but I'm also, like... You know, Sour Patch Kid. No, that's not even a good example. I'm kind of like a molten lava cake that was maybe left in the oven too long, but like the inside is still gooey. Like the other side is like mm, a little bit too hard, but like anyway, I'm I'm still I have like the 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 crunchy chewy soft center situation. 
But um Oh yes, Arcane, League of Legends. So when you would load it into someone's rift or maybe even Howling Abyss, they would have um different voice lines from different characters. But one of, like I said, one that was got me was Heimer Dinger. He was like, You're gonna do great. And I'm just like, you know what, Heimer? You're right. I am gonna do great. <laughs> you know. But like I just I always just loved that one because it was just like it was it's just encouraging in a way. Like, and obviously, you know, it's not so, I don't know. I don't know where I was really going with that. But I think the point of what I was trying to say is like, I just want to do something that I can be proud of. And again, I know this harkens back, harkens back to the last episode, but it, it still kind of ties in because like, if I, if I, if I fully go down this VTuber path and become a streamer, and obviously it's not necessarily having to be like my ultimate career path and stuff like that, but you know, I, I would want to put in the effort and and make it something good, you know? And I want to, but at as oftentimes I'm like I'm questioning, you know, is this something that I'll be good at? Is this something that people would actually want to watch. Like, there's people who are far more established in things, and this is not me trying to drag anyone, and this is not anybody trying to get hit with strays. This is just my own insecurities and in, in things speaking through. So don't be a hit dog who gets, uh, don't be a dog who hollers because they got hit. But you sometimes will see people who, are seemingly good and great and they have a lot of different stuff going on. But at the same time, it's like your viewer count doesn't kind of reflect that. And so it just kind of makes me think, you know, am I going to be that person? Am I going to be this charismatic streamer with, you know, one viewer for like six hours? And yes, I get it. (laughs) Well, yes. (laughs) If you get the reference, ten points to you. Uh, again, I'm not keeping score of the points. You figure out the math. That's on you. Submit your scores at the end of the month if you such you feel so inclined. But um, I get it that everybody starts somewhere, and nobody, unless I guess you're just super famous, <laughs> is going to be showing up with like viewers on viewers on viewers. You know, at some point in your life, in in, in the Span of a streamer, you're going to be talking to nobody but you and Nightbot and yourself. <laughs> and that's okay, you know? Um, everybody starts somewhere, you know? But, like, I just, I don't want to be one of those people who, like, hmm, I had a friend and had because we don't talk anymore and as far as I'm, as far as I'm concerned they Cali just to me dead to me but I had a friend and I remember finding them because they were playing a certain game we were playing a certain character and I was like oh my gosh I love you I love your vibe you know you're so fun you you know you're this that and the third and they were like this is before Twitch was like Twitch you know not to say it wasn't back then, but this was like before everybody in their mama was on Twitch. But, you know, they had a little decent following. They had a little decent viewing and everything. And then their computer stopped working. So they had to take a bit of a hiatus. And when they came back, they never really got back to where they once were. And... I don't want to be like that in a way of like having achieved some sort of a, some sort of success. And then, well, I feel like the situation was different. And I'm, and see, now this time I have a good analogy. Um, it's like, imagine you are a track star and you get hurt. Like you, I don't know, let's say you, let's say you, you do a really, 
like you tore an ACL, which just thinking about that shit was like, I don't really know much it is, but tearing something just sounds dreadful. From what I know, it's whenever there's a big accident in football, whatever, whatever, it's always an ACL thing. But let's say you do that, right? You tear this ligament and you're down for the count for six months, right? And let's just say that's the healing process. That's not including therapy. That's not including, you know, all these different things. So you, you're down for the six months, okay? And you're like, okay, the doctor's like, you know what? Cool. You're good. You can start getting back at it. If you honestly think that you're just going to go back out there after having been down for X amount of time and just going back out there running the marathons and winning medals, that's not how it works. But this person, they came back, and it's like, people have moved on. The game you were playing has moved on. You're, no shade, not as good as you used to be. Which, even then, was kind of questionable as it is. But I didn't know much of it. Not with the information I know now, it's kind of, mm, you were getting carried. No, 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 no. Throwing a little bit of shade. But you can't take this break and then just, and this, again, unless you just have this, major cult following. And I don't use cult in the sense of cult. Like cult in the sense of like, everybody's like, oh my gosh, I love this person. If they like, but if they were to take a break and come back, boom, they're going to get all this critical acclaim and success that they had before. But you didn't have that mama. And there's nothing wrong with that. But like, you jumping back in it and not really taking the time to quote unquote, excuse me, given the analogy I used earlier, you're not taking that time to heal and, and adjust and have therapy for where you left off and just thinking, oh, okay, well, I'm back. You know, everybody and their mom's gonna show up. We're gonna be doing this. Be, no, 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 no. That's not to say you can't get back to those days. But, like, at that same time, that's just not where you are. So, like, you know, anyway, I'm not sure why I use the message analogy, but I think I did because I'm simply saying I don't want to be one of those people who this has been all over the place today. I'm not going to lie to you. I have a lot of different thoughts, a lot of different insecurities, a lot of different fears. I just, I want to be able to go out there and if I do these things, you know, be able to be proud of what I'm doing. But like I said, at the same time, you know, seeing these various streamers um, or content creators even, like they don't necessarily have to be streamers, but content creators who just are like, you know, I'm going on hiatus, so I'm dealing with this, so I'm going to be done with that, or, <clears throat> excuse me, life is a bitch. <laughs> um, sometimes bitches are fun, sometimes bitches are really bitches, and it's just like, I can't fucking stand you, and, you know, it's like, like I said, seeing that streamer today, like, yeah, I'm graduating. I'm just kind of like, and, and I've oftentimes made the joke of like, I'm going to graduate before I even start um, it. It's just kind of like a, like, I have a friend who uh, is going to be debuting probably sometime next year. Uh, early next year, whatever, and I love them dearly, and I'm excited and I'm happy for them, and I want nothing but the best for them. But they were also sharing to me, you know, obviously some of their fears of like if this big, massive um, content creator has these fears or feel like they aren't doing enough or whatever, then you know, like who's to say that I'm doing enough? And, you know, I was, I, I kind of told him, I was like, you know, you, you can aspire to be where someone's at and you can have the work ethic of trying to get somewhere else or whatever. But it's like not to discount, don't discount what you're doing 
or what you want to do, you know, because not everybody's on the same scale. And just because somebody else feels like they're not doing enough doesn't invalidate what you're doing. And, but then at the same time, I'm just kind of like, will I be cut out for this? Will I be able to do this? Like, how long will I do this before I want to graduate? You know, like, will I even graduate? Will I just, like, will, will I have enough of something to graduate with? You know, like, the, the mind likes to race and wonder and wander and, and just um, have these scenarios that aren't even, like, like, there's perhaps some factuality to it and some reality to it, but at the same time, it's also kind of like you're aspiring a little bit sweetie. Just relax. Like, everybody's journey is different. Everybody's, everything is different, you know? Um, so, I guess I say all that to say and to, to, you know, I've been at this for like 30 something minutes, so I kind of feel like I should wrap up, but also just gonna keep rambling. But, um, I say all that to say it's just like, It is disheartening seeing people have to graduate for one reason or another, or seeing people go on hiatus for one reason or another. But at the same time, there's people who, like I said, that are debuting, are re-debuting, are, are, are doing things and, and going for what they're going for. So it's like, it's kind of seeing, there's this movie called Vantage Point. And it was basically, it's, if I remember correctly, it's a dog shit movie. But the point was being, it was like, I think it was like an assassination or some kind of a murder. And they had like eight different viewpoints. Like one person was on the street, like another person was at a cafe. One, and so they, they had to try and piece together this murder from the different angles. And I think that's how life is in a way. There's a lot of different vantage points of... You know, I see this streamer graduating, but this other streamer literally just uh, debuted a 2.0 model. And it's, life is, <laughs> life is multifaceted. And you can't just look at one side of it and then be like, okay, well, that's just it. Like, in some instances, sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, uh, I can't think of a good example of like, Something that I'm just like, nah, I'm not fucking with that. Um, like, shout out to Steve Irwin, you know, RIP. He was a real one. He loved animals and all that stuff. And your man was, you know, one with nature, but I'm not that girl. I only look at the multifaceted of that. I'm not, I'm not doing nature. I'm not doing that. Like, they're cute on TV. I love me watching me some animal documentaries, but we're good. There's nothing you can do to convince me to go to the Sahara Desert or wherever and play around with animals. I'm good. But, other instances, there's times and places and things where it's just like, let's look at this from different sides and let's see, you know, what's the difference here, right? Or if this can be not so much fun, but if I can see a side of this that, you know, isn't per se just negative or... I'm so sorry, not me being tired in the afternoon. Well, I'm always tired in the afternoon, but... Anyway, but I say that to say, like, I feel like I'm like, just kind of in the place of like, this is discouraging. This is disheartening. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy for you. I'm so glad that you're doing this. Like, I just want everybody to win. I just want everybody to be happy. <laughs> There's this clip of like mis uh, from Miss Congeniality. Um, spoilers, spoilers. The movie's old as fuck. So if you haven't seen it, sorry, spoilers. But it's even in the premise. So technically, it's not really spoiling anything. But <clears throat> Sandra Bullock, national treasure, global treasure even, um, goes undercover into a beauty pageant and hilarity ensues. But at the end of it, she goes slices a bunch because she wins Miss Congeniality. And uh, they had a joke early on that they were like, <sighs> I can't remember the exact context of like, a question, but everybody's answer was like, world peace, 
world peace. I think world peace. And so she gave like a different answer or whatever. But at the end of the movie, she's like, you know, but I really do want world peace. And I was just like, it was just so funny because like it was, it was one of those things that we, it's a, it's a common answer to use. And it's kind of like they were mocking it in a way, but at the same time, she was very much at the end like, yeah, you know, I, I really do want the, to like the world to be good. And that's kind of like how I am. I'm just like, I really just want to see people win. I want to see all my friends win. I want them to be successful and, and, and achieve their goals and go for what they want. You know, sh- you know shoot, <laughs> shoot for the stars, bro. My gosh, I'm actually going to go jump off a cliff after this. Anyway, but yeah, shoot for the stars, you know. Um, I, I, I kind of like the quote of like, shoot for the stars, you'll land on the moon or some shit. Okay. Oh, sorry. I said it backwards. You shoot for the moon, and if you don't reach you, you'll land amongst the stars. Cute, inspirational, whatever. But, um, like I said before, there's a seat at, for everyone at the table. And I want everyone to have a seat at the table. I want you to be able to do what you want to do. And, and I guess I'm saying that to myself as well. You know, Julian, you should be able to sit at the table that you're, you're, you're telling other people to sit at. But I, I sometimes kind of feel like that mom who's like making sure everybody else eats and is having a good time. But then I'm like, you know, I'm always in the kitchen or something or other. And it's like, you know, you can sit down and eat too. It's like, no, no, y'all. And it's like somebody has to like force her to sit down and eat with the family or whatever because it's like, you can sometimes get lost in caring for other people and what they want and what they want to do. And it's like, but what you want and what you want to do is also important. Anyway, I want to wrap this up. It's been 40 minutes. I don't want to go in 45 minutes. So, <clears throat> it's been your boy, Julian Valentine, Julian C. Valentine, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, if you've listened this long, you get a gold star. And, um, I don't know, put your favorite emoji in the comments if you listen this far. Um, I always say, like, put a crown or something, but whatever your favorite emoji is. I have one or two that I'm just like, I always use. Like, if it's on Twitch, I have a little call smile. I love that that emote is just, you know, uh, personified with me because. I use it for everything. Um, if Twitch ever gets rid of the emote, I'm going to cry. So don't do it, Twitch. I'll fight you. I'll sue. Um, anyway, if no one else is with you today, you are loved. You are cherished. And above all that, I am proud of you. It doesn't matter if you just woke up. It doesn't matter if you just went to sleep. Hell, I don't care if you didn't even get out of bed today, baby. The fact that you are still here... That is something to be proud of. Because let me tell you something. Life is hard. Okay? Life is difficult on so many levels. <laughs> so, shout out to you for continuing to exist. I'm proud of you. And I'm proud of you for doing your best. Whatever that may entail. Whatever that may be. Go you. It's a shame. I completely forget how I end these. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for listening. I hope you some kind of way resonated with what I said. And go for your dreams. Don't. It's okay to be discouraged. It's okay to be disheartened. But don't let it be something that completely um, that completely derails you from what you're doing. You know, no one should have that power over you to to make you stop going for anything that you wish to achieve. Um, But that's also to say, don't feel like you have to force something if you no longer wish to do it or you no longer feel like it's for you. Because sometimes everything ain't for everybody. And sometimes it's better to cut your losses and get out if you know that that's not something you're going to want to do. 
everything's a thought process, everything is something to think about and and to consider and anyway. I'm rambling again. It's been Julian. I love you so much. Thank you so much for listening. And I will see you next time. Okay. Um, how do I turn this off?